You are listening to Show Up Arizona. My name is Billy Harfosh. We are broadcasting today from Dave Pratt's Star Worldwide Network Studios, and I've got one of the most amazing stories I've ever heard. I, I was getting goosebumps. I, I, I came across Eddie Ortega on Instagram, on social media, and I read your story as somebody that's traveled the world and lived abroad. I remember when I would go out on my, you know, I would be going to Thailand for a year or going to Ukraine or Poland or wherever. And my, my mom used to make me watch this show. It was called Locked Up Abroad. And she used to make me watch the show to, to scare the crap out of me, to yeah. scare me straight, to make sure I don't do anything stupid, to end up in a prison. Eddie Ortega ended up, for oh, this is about a year ago, uh, he found himself in a Mexican prison for 70 Four days. I just want the audience, just put yourself in Eddie Ortega's shoes. 74 days in a Mexican prison. He forgot to leave a legal U.S. firearm behind. It led to a vehicle search by the Mexican National Guard. He was charged with transporting and possessing an illegal firearm, a federal offense in Mexico due to the 9 millimeter caliber. Listen to this. He was put in a maximum security federal prison with 95% cartel gang members. He lost 20 pounds. You're gonna about to see him here. Here he is right here on camera. He's a very handsome, uh, strong, fit individual. He lost 20 pounds. They shaved his head, inhumane conditions, no sunlight for the first 30 days. Eddie, welcome to the show. I just can't imagine what you went through. And, and when I read your story, I had to have you on because I think number one, there's a couple parts. Um, I wanna, tell your story to, to scare people, to make sure pe other people don't go yeah. through what you went through. Number two, I'm interested to hear what it was like to be in a Mexican prison with cartel members. And number three, it sounds like you've come out of this on the other side with a real love of life and, and a new uh, perception on things. So let's start at the beginning. Why were you going to Mexico? All right. So it's funny that you mentioned the show, um, you know, the, the I'm going abroad, you know, the, locked, up um, abroad. locked up abroad. Yeah. yeah so um, I used to like really enjoy watching those kind of documentaries about prisons and, you know, and I used to always say like, man, that's crazy. You never think it's going to happen to you, you know? So, um, but yeah, so 2022 Thanksgiving, um, during that, so I live here in Arizona, right? Um, I don't have any family here. So my Thanksgiving plans were kind of open. Um, at the time, um, the person I was dating, we were last minute, like, you know what? We have four days off work. Let's go do a short trip. Let's go to Rocky Point. We've never been there before. We hear all about it. It's a you know a couple hour drive from the Arizona border. So uh, we just we decided to do that last minute. I think we planned it like Wednesday and you know Thursday was the day we uh, we left and uh, got the RV booked and everything. We're all excited and uh, so we're heading out there and uh, I remember the the most important thing we we're like thinking about was the timing. We we're like, all right, if we time this correctly, we leave right now, we're going to catch the sunset at our Airbnb. It's going to be the perfect, you know, way to get there. And so that's all we're thinking about. We're all excited. We pack, you know, last minute, just let's go. And so uh, we're driving over. Once we get to the uh, Mexican border or, you know, um, once we cross over to the other side, because you, you just drive in, right? Um, they have a system where it's a random inspection. So you get a red light, green light. Uh, type situation and I've crossed the border many times um, and you know I've, I, I've never been inspected or anything like that you know so I didn't think anything of it you just drive over this time it was red light and they ask you to pull over to the side so I did that um, and they let you know hey we're gonna inspect your vehicle you know no problem go ahead you know and um, so as they're searching the vehicle um, all of a sudden you know I can tell something was was off the way there everybody went over to my vehicle and uh, they start explaining, uh, they come over to me and start explaining, hey, we found a gun. And, uh, you know, at this point, we're kind of like, okay, what, like, we own guns, obviously. And then here in Arizona, it's a very, you know, pro-gun state. So it's just kind of like, it, you don't really think about it, like you're doing anything bad or illegal or anything, you know. So um, so I found the gun uh, under the passenger seat. And uh, from there, we, you know, we got obviously alarmed, but we didn't really think about, like, okay, what's going to happen next? We thought, okay, you know, turn around or do we pay a fine? Um, you know, either way, we're still thinking we're going to make it to our Airbnb. So wait, at wait this point. real, real yeah. quick, I got to stop you there. So at the point you get the red light, you know, you're going to be searched. Yeah. They say, please leave the vehicle. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so you're outside of the vehicle. Are you standing outside watching as they search? Yes. And obviously at this moment, you're not nervous at all because you think everything is fine because you don't know that the gun is in the car. Correct. 
And, and for people that are listening out of state, uh, that are outside of Arizona, that are watching this, it is very normal. It is very common for someone to have a firearm. That's why I never do middle fingers or road rage in Arizona, because it's very normal for people to have a firearm in their vehicle. That's just kind of yeah. part of the culture here. So you're seeing them search the car. You're, you're kind of not getting nervous. There's no red flags going up for you because there's nothing wrong in the car. When they told you, uh, sir, we found a gun in the vehicle, did you automatically say, oh, my God, I, I can't believe that we left that there? Or was it like, oh, they're framing me? Like, where, where did your mind go? I started, I mean, it was everything happened so quickly. So I, me, me and at the time, my girlfriend, like, we would go out shooting every once in a while, go out to the desert, go to ranges and whatnot. And so, um, again, we had, you know, firearms around. Um, and so... Um, you know, I started kind of like, okay, so there's a firearm in the car. I didn't think about it, like they were framing us or anything like that, you know? So, um, you know, and then once they, they pulled it out, you know, and the officer had it, you know, I recognized it right away, you know? And so, um, from there on, like I said, it was just kind of one of those things where we didn't know exactly what was going to happen next. You know, everything, we're just kind of taking things one thing at a time. Um, and yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of how it all initiated that's how it all got started so they tell you the guns in the car there's a problem you're thinking in your head oh we maybe we got to go back maybe we pay a fine maybe there's a way to do this right yeah uh yeah. when did you what was the next step so from there on you know we started uh so they, they started interrogating us more you know asking more questions and then um they started letting us know hey you know so with w it is an illegal firearm here in mexico uh, it's a nine millimeter caliber so it is a federal offense um, so, you know, they're just letting us know kind of like what we're coming up against as far as like potential charges. And so, you know, I'm just asking, okay, you know, like I, you know, I understand, apologize. It was an accident, you know, um, you know, what can we go back or what, you know, and this, the whole time there forward, like it was very like misleading as far as like what was going to happen next. You know, they're, you know, maybe trying to keep us calm or something, but they were just like, no, it's okay. Um, we're going to take you down to the county jail you know, a couple blocks away, uh, process you, you should be out in a few hours, you know, so we're thinking, okay, that sucks, but at least, you know, all right, let's go get this done, and then we'll, we still have a few days of vacation left, you know, so. So they're being very calm, and yeah, I have to yeah. ask you, with the last name, like, Ortega, do you speak Spanish? I do, yes. So are you yeah. communicating with, this is the Mexican, what is it, the Mexican uh, National Guard, is that right? Correct. Okay, yeah, so yeah. are you communicating in purely Spanish? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so that, there's no language barrier. You, you understand what's going on. They're going to take you down to the county jail. They're going to process you. Maybe you do some paperwork, pay a fine, and then you can continue on with your vacation. That's, that's where your head's at at the moment. Correct, yeah. So pretty much, you know, once you find it, they're still, you know, searching deeper. I can see them, like, taking the seats, you know, the, the uh, cushions out. What kind of vehicle see, was it? I have a Toyota Tacoma, so okay. a truck, yeah. Um, and so at the time, my girlfriend, right, she was there with me. Uh, she didn't, she didn't speak Spanish. Right. So I'm trying to like translate everything to her or, you know, she's having me ask them things and whatnot. So, um, you know, but I'm, I'm the one that's mostly communicating with them. Um, and then it gets to the point where they're like, all right, uh, we're going to take you guys over to the, uh, to the county jail here. And then, uh, they have us, uh, hold up these like signs and they read our rights and they're like videotaping us. And, you know, at that point it was a little like. Okay, this is a little more serious. That's, is that know. when, that is not when you got this mug shot? No. Okay, no, no, so that's a no. different, we're, we're getting to that part of the story. Yeah. So when yeah. you say you're holding up signs, like what kind of signs? Um, I don't even know what, uh, I think it was like some sort of like paperwork or something, okay. but. So they're videoing I, you, paperwork, yeah. uh, pictures, and now you're thinking, wait a minute, this isn't like an in and out thing. This is yeah. something's happening. Yeah, okay. something's happening, you know, but yeah, th I'm still staying positive, you know, I'm still thinking, okay, we're going to go home, you know, everything's going to be fine. Did you make a phone call? Like, so. It, it took a while. It took a while. And, and uh, so they take us down to the county jail, right? Um, now, this whole process of, like, searching the vehicle, um, it all started probably around 4 p.m.-ish, right around there. Right. You want to make it for sunset. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So it was around 4 p.m.-ish. And then um, we didn't actually leave the border station there till probably about 8 p.m. Like, we were there for a couple hours just okay. waiting, and then they were doing their thing. Um, and then they uh, handcuff, uh, handcuff us and then uh, put us in the back of, like, uh, this truck with, you know, and in Mexico, like, most of the police and, you know, they're, like, machine guns and, you know, just, just loaded. So, Is your ex-girlfriend freaking out at oh, this it, point? Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, at this point, we're still fairly calm because we still have the hope and that we're, everything's going to be fine in a few hours. Everything's going to get resolved, you know. Um, so at first, everything was, like, fine there. So 
so they take us down to the uh, jail and then uh, they start, you know, taking all of our stuff. They start taking passports. They impound my truck, um, you know, um, yeah, wallets, phones, everything. So then they start having us, you know, um, asking us questions. And, um, you know, some some of the, the questions were, you know, like contact information, that, you know, and that's in my phone. So I'm like, well, that's in my phone, you know, so I, I don't have that uh, memorized. And so... At first, they were kind of like, okay, well, you know, it is kind of what it is. And so they didn't, they didn't really, like, want to work with you, you know. Um, but, again, I was just thinking, okay, well, you know, we're going to get out here in a bit anyway. So um, now what ended up happening is that little county jail. And now this, this border where we crossed that, most people go through uh, Nogales border. That's, like, the main border, right? We went through a smaller town called Sonoyita. So it's a very, very small town. You, um, Google Maps took us through there, you know. So, um, you know, so... It's a very small jail, and they only have one holding cell in the in the back of the the office or the, the building there, and so um, nobody was in there. So they put me in there, and then for my girlfriend, since she's female, they can't put us together. They uh, put her. So when you walk in, you go in through like the office, and then they take you to the back, and then there's like a back break room, almost like a living room type area, and there's a, a couch and a recliner, like a lazy boy recliner. And so they handcuffed her from her ankle to the Lazy Boy couch. Um, you know, so that's where they placed us. And, again, this is on, on Thursday. It's a Thursday night. And, uh, you know, hours are going by. We're asking, like, hey, what's going on? When are we going to get out? And they're just being very, very, like, brief. And, like, well, you guys will get out soon. We'll get out soon. Okay. All right. All right. And then, uh, you know, finally they come with these forms and they tell us, hey, so these forms here are for, they go over to the uh, um, U.S. consulate, the U.S. embassy here. Um, it's going to be contact information. There's some of your rights on there and this and that. And so then again, I was like, well, we don't have our contact info, you know, for emergency contacts. Finally, they were able to go get our, our phones and they let us like scroll through, but they were like watching everything we're doing, right? They don't want you to like communicate or doing, you know, so, um, so finally we f get that filled out. Um, and then on the back of that packet, there is a list. Well, there's, there is supposed to be a list of names of lawyers that are recommended by the uh, consulate. Uh, there's only one name for that loca location. So it was kind of like one option, you know. So, so you called the lawyer. So, they, yeah, they, they ask you, do you want us to contact, you know, the, the lawyer? And I was like, I mean, I was like, at this point, you know, let's, yeah, because I, yeah. I, I really don't know what's going on. You right, know? I, right. I know we're in trouble, but yeah. I don't know what's going on. And so then um, they also contacted my family that I put down on the contact information, uh, which I wasn't aware they were going to do, right? And so while we're waiting there, you know, for hours, night, night passes over, so we sleep there, you know. Um, and during this time that we're in there, um, so in, you know, I'll get back to it, but like in that little county jail, we were in there till Sunday. So from Thursday night till Sunday. So by and, the time Sunday rolls around, you're thinking, okay, this is not good. I mean, yeah. if this was just a little thing where it's paperwork and we, you know, pay a fine and they're going to send us back home, <clears throat> they wouldn't have impounded my truck. They wouldn't have, you know, chained my girlfriend to an armchair or to, yeah, to a yeah. recliner. And they wouldn't have kept us here till Sunday. Right. So you must be thinking, I'm not going to be living here. I mean, what is the next step? Yeah, exactly. You're just all these questions and no one's really answering So anything. when did you find out that, oh, my goodness, I I'm going to be going to prison? So what ended up happening was, um, so the, the lawyer that was on that list, right, ended up showing up. And uh, when he showed up, this was, I believe, on Saturday, um, either Friday or Saturday, he shows up and he's like, hey, I'm here to represent you. I've been speaking to your family. So they were already got in contact with my family. Um, so, you know, they, they're already aware. And so they actually had me come here. Um, and so he's kind of going over the whole process of what potentially could happen with this kind of case. Uh, it's a common thing he sees happen, you know, uh, Americans come over, mm -hmm. Arizona border with guns and this and that, you know. So he's giving me kind of like the best case scenarios, right, um, which are kind of like it might take a few days. or. But we're going to work this into, out. Right. Yeah. Then he starts going into like possibly weeks or possibly months, you know. So we're like, okay, you know, well, let's let's figure this out so that it's not that, you know, yeah. that drastic. So you know, we're being cooperative this whole time. Um, and so uh, we have that conversation. He has assigned us some, some uh, forms and whatnot. So we thought, okay, he's going to be representing us. He leaves. 
we don't hear back or anything. And uh, again, this is like Friday or Saturday. And then on Saturday night, uh, one of the guards comes in um, and he lets us know, hey, uh, we're going to be transporting you to court. And it's in Hermosillo, which is about a five hour drive from the border to down south. So you're saying they're bringing me. I want to go north. You're, they're bringing me south. And now yeah. I have a court case, which means, you know, when you have a court case, that means there's going to be some sort of a, a judgment or, or a possible sentence. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Red flags are going up. At this point, have you spoken to your family? Uh, so I got to, no, it was just based off of what the lawyer had told me. And nobody, me. nobody like drove down or, I mean, I guess there's nothing they could do. No, cause they were a little bit further away. Okay. Like they were, they're not, I don't have family here in Arizona. So it wasn't that short of a so drive. So fast forward so, to, they put you, do they put you in a bus or something? So what ended up happening, right? So they, they let us know, Hey, we're going to be transporting you. This was like around Saturday night. They didn't give us like an exact time or anything like that. So we're just waiting, waiting, waiting. And, uh, another night rolls around now it's Sunday morning. And then Sunday up until sometime early in the morning, uh, the uh, federales come in and um, they're like, all right, you guys ready? So they grab me. And then um, now this whole time, right, it's been three days now. And you asked earlier about like, you know, the like how my girlfriend is dealing with things, you know. So um, at this point, she's really stressing out. Like, I and, and, would and, imagine. Yeah. So yeah. at this point, you know, and again, there's the language barrier. So. Um, you know, she's asking for things and, um, you know, and she's like yelling and I can hear because she's like right on the other side. Right. So I'm like, you know, hey, please calm down. Like, let, you know, let, let, like, let me handle this. Everything's going to be fine, you know. And so, um, again, a lot of it has to do with the frustration of like she just can't get any answers from anyone. And then the guards are telling me to, you know, calm her down because it's going to be worse for us. And this, you know, so it was just like we we're just trying to stay as calm as possible. Right. But so Sunday rolls around and. Um, they're, they're there to pick us up. So they take us out, um, you know, handcuff us, and then they put us in the, in the back of a truck. It was a pickup truck in the, in the back seats. And then it's uh, two gentlemen, and uh, they're dressed uh, not like officers. They're very, like, kind of, like, casual with scarves with uh, AK-47s on them, like, very, like, military, but uh, almost, like, like cartel looking, you know, it was really, like, <laughs> yeah, it was a little, a little weird, you know, but, um, but they're actually really nice. They stopped and got us some like tacos on the way, on the way while they were transporting. Are you us. handcuffed during this? Uh, yeah, yeah. We're, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're so handcuffed you, you're transported, you're handcuffed, you make it down there and you go to court. Yeah. You're yeah. sitting in court. Obviously your girlfriend doesn't understand Spanish. You understand yeah. Spanish. I'm going to fast forward a little bit cause I want to get into some other stuff before we, we wrap here. But did you feel like you got a fair trial or a fair hearing um i mean at the end of the day here's the thing like i obviously there was laws broken right um i have all respect for the laws um people say well there's signs on the way there that i, I get that right the whole thing here this is an accident it was just right. something you, you forget right so obviously on my end it's like it was an innocent mistake right there was no uh you know malintent or anything like that so for me it's just you know i'm pleading at this point of like Hey, like we didn't, you know, it was an accident, right? So I'm not thinking I did anything wrong. Again, at the end of the day, there was laws broken. So they went obviously with the route of charging us, right? Um, with with, and the thing is, like in Mexico, it's not like you're innocent till proven guilty. It's you're you're guilty un, until proven any, you know, innocent or guilty either way. So, um, so what ended up happening? So we get to the to Hermosillo. Uh, they put us in another jail there. We were there for another day and a half. Okay. And so we're still waiting for, no, it was uh, Sunday. No, it was, it was half a day because we were supposed to have court early that day. We didn't have court till about 8 or 9 p.m. on a Sunday, okay? So we're there all day waiting, waiting, waiting. And then um, once we get to court, a lawyer shows up 10 minutes before the hearing. And it's a different guy than we had seen the first time. So this guy comes in and he's like, hey, so your dad uh, contracted me, you know, so I'm going to be representing you now. Uh, this is what I know now. Can you fill me in on any more details? And we're just kind of like talking quick, you know, because 10 like, minutes hearings, before the hearing. Yeah. Right. I'm like, all right, well, we're coming up, you know? So I'm just telling him and then he's like, all right. He's like, honestly, he's like, this is what's going to happen. He's like, you're most likely both going to be going into, um, uh, prison for federal prison. In yeah, Mexico. Now for, does your, when you hear that, when you hear that from the lawyer and then yeah. you hear it from the judge, from a, a sentencing standpoint, does your heart just drop? I mean, from when I heard it from the lawyer, I, it was one of those things where I'm like, okay, you just kind of accept it, right? You just man up. Yeah, yeah, you just kind of like, all right, let's just roll with the punches, you know? So at this point, you're just kind of like, But when you right, heard it go. from the judge, when you heard an official yeah. sentence, 
in a foreign country and you knew you were going to federal prison, not just any federal pl- prison, but in Mexico, you must have felt scared. It, it was one of, honestly, like it, when I recall, like it was one of those things where you're not real. It, it feels like a dream, right? It didn't, nothing really actually like set in where it was like reality till I was in the cell in the gay guest. In the gay guest. Okay. Yeah. So I want, I want you to bring me, uh, Eddie Ortega, I want you to bring me to this, this photo here. Yeah. This photo behind you is you, this is your mugshot when you went to prison. And obviously you lost, you had lost weight. Uh, I can't imagine that the trauma you had went through, the sleepless nights. Uh, I'd imagine they weren't feeding you very well. Your first 30 days in prison, you talk about that you didn't even see the sun. Yeah. How did you hold it together from a mental standpoint? Yeah, so, I mean, from, from the beginning, like, so what, once after the, the court, right, like all that finishes, they're like, all right, you're, you're being sentenced. Uh, and what they ended up giving me was uh, they said 60 to 90 day investigation period for the DA to, like, investigate everything. And, and they got to hold you during that. And they're going to hold me during that time, right? And it's not like you're just going to hold, you know, like you're going straight to prison, right? And then, you know, we'll see what happens type thing, you know? There's no date set. There's no, there's no, nothing to really go off of, right? You're just kind of hoping. Um, and so from the very beginning, obviously, the, they're, they're just trying to break you down, you know? So after uh, that happened, um, they, they put you in an armored vehicle with a bunch of other uh, people that were in the, in the back holding cell at the court, um, you know, you're all, uh, chained up, hands, feet. You're in the back of this armored vehicle driving, and the prison's about 45 minutes away, right? This whole time, you're just like, oh, my God, like, is this, this is really happening right now. And uh, the other guys in there, like, um, you know, asking, like, what are you in for, you know? And, and you're just trying to think, at, like, strategically, like, should I say what I did? Or if I do, then is it too soft? Are they going to yeah, be You like, got to say something well, worse than that. You know, yeah. yeah. So, you know, you're just talk. trying to keep things, like, as quiet as possible, try, you know, just... And so, anyways, once you get to the prison, right from the beginning, it's very, like, military style, like, look down, don't look at it, you know, just start yelling at you, <coughs> excuse me, and then um, they take you out, you got to follow certain lines on the ground, <coughs> and then um, they uh, have you take your clothes off into your underwear, spray you down with cold water, just, like, everything to just kind of, like, get you, like, settled in of, like, now nah, you're here on our terms, you know? And then uh, once they take you over to, um, you get your belongings. That it's a bag with you know some clothes and some some stuff in there. And then um, they take you over to like the the locker room area, kind of like the bathroom area. And then they you're in line. And then they give you clippers. And they're like, all right, you got to shave your head off. You shave your own head? Well, I, I was like, all right, do I have to? And they're like, yes, you have to. And you don't want us to do it. So I'm like, all right. They make and, you shave your own head. Yeah, and and I, I'm like I'm big about my hair. I'm like I, I get a, I a haircut every Friday. I'm nice. like fresh fade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I had just gotten a haircut for this vacation. You know, so, I'm trying to look nice and everything. And so I'm like, I'm like, all right. Okay, here so it goes. so so real quick though, I just real quick, couple yeah. things. Number one, is your girlfriend going through this as well in a, a female prison, or did she get off? No, she she got off. Yeah. She got off. Okay. Yeah, we don't have to get into that too much, but she yeah. did not serve the time that you did. No, no, no. They she, let her go home. They let yeah, her go yeah, home. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, number two, you mentioned the first 30 days, no sunlight. Uh, you speak Spanish, so you're able to communicate with people. You're in a prison with 95% cartel members. This ain't no country club in Florida prison, yeah. right? Yeah. How did, how was your interactions? How did you um, make sure you were safe from a physical standpoint? Uh, did you make friends in there? I mean, just give me the rundown, a couple of bullet points of, of how you felt. Yeah, yeah. So there's yeah, a the lot, lot of stories in there. So, so once once you get in there, right? Um, like I said, when it really hit reality was when they put you in your cell and those doors closed. Now, the way that they do things there is the first thirty days, you are uh, they call them pods, right? So these pods are like the buildings, and there's a bunch of different ones. Um, the Hermosillo prison, it's I believe it's the second largest prison in the world as far as like area, and so it's a huge prison. So the first 30 days, they lock you up with all the newbies, everybody that's, like, new to prison, right? Everybody that just arrived. And so they place you there for the first 30 days. They're watching you. They're analyzing you. They're um, having psychiatrists come and ask you questions. Because from the first 30 days, then they're going to transport you over to general population, and they're going to place you in the population based around your personality, your character, types of crime, and that sort of stuff. Um, so those first, first 30 days, though, was the worst out of the whole. That was the whole, total hell. Total hell. Yeah. Why? 
main reasons was so one the inmate that my cellmate that i got which is it's funny so the cellmate that i had this the whole 30 days he was locked up the same day i got there so he was in the armored vehicle with me he was in the back holding cell um he was a fentanyl um drug user and he also like sold drugs and that's what he was there for for drugs and fentanyl um and so he was having withdrawals this whole time and uh for the first like 15 days, it was really bad. And so their protocol, when someone's uh, going through withdrawals and they put them in prison, they handcuff them hand and feet all all day. Just handcuff them up. Yeah. So because he's screaming he, or whatever. Oh or? man, he's he's like he's going to the bathroom on himself. He, right in your on the cell. Ground, this in is my your cell, cellmate. Like we're like in a eight by eight, maybe and ten by ten. And you're just like. So they come in and they handcuff his hands and his feet. Yeah, this whole time he's yeah he's handcuffed. So at this point, I'm helping the guy with a lot of things, getting him up, taking him, trying to help him go to the bathroom, um, you know, just minor things, you know, putting his blanket on, stuff like that, right? And this dude's just sick. Like he's just he's just like sleeping most of the time, and he just you like, could almost think bad. the guy's gonna die. Yeah, like it was really bad, right? And so um, you know, I'm trying like, all right, you know. The, the, the worst part, obviously, is the conditions because he's throwing up. He's going to the bathroom. All over your... Oh. Yeah, and it's like, who else is going to clean it? You would think, like, personnel would go clean it. So guess who had to clean it? Because if not, if it's going to it's gonna be you, there all day. You cleaned up this man's... Yes. ...excrement and, and puke. Yes. Yes. I mean, that must and have been a shock. I was, I was super frustrated. Of course, you know, I'm like, maybe because I'm American. And, you know, like, I don't know. But I, I was just like, this is not... I was complaining a lot to the guards, you know? So the guards come around every so often... And I'm telling them, I'm like, look, I'm like, there's throw up right there. I'm like, can you please like send somebody over to clean it up? They're like, we don't have the staff. They're like, so someone's got to take care of it. During your stay, yeah, 74 days, did you ever fear for your life? Um, it was, I, I would say no. I would say no. Um, main reason was because uh, you asked one of the questions about making friends and, and whatnot, you know. So um, I, I didn't, I didn't make any enemies, you know. Um, so when when I got locked up, the two weeks pri- no two or three weeks prior, I had done my first uh, men's physique uh, bodybuilding competition, so I was in my best shape I'd been all my life. I was, you you were going into prison, Jack. I was jacked. I was <laughs> jacked and ripped. You know, so yeah, yeah. So I get in there, and if anything, it was more curiosity from the other inmates. Like, who's this dude that? Well, I'm Mexican, right? But I, I don't really look typically like Mexican, right? So they're. Wondering like who's the pretty have, boy? Who's the pretty boy? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I have my shaved head, you know, so yeah, I look. So, I had some yeah. extra, you know, harder looking points, you know, so right? I didn't, you know, <laughs> um, but no, no tattoos on me, right? Almost everybody's got tattoos, so they're just kind of like, who's this dude, you know? And so people start, you know, talking to you, and you know, and so you know, I'm I'm a very friendly person, I, you know, it, like, and so again, I'm still trying to be strategic, where I'm like, I don't want to seem soft or nice in there, right? But I still want to get along, um, and so. What most most of the time that I spent in there was working out, and and, I, and we can get into that a little bit more. But it was mainly for just to not go crazy, you mental. Know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so they watched me work out, like on the little breaks we had, we go to the you know uh, showers or whatever. They gave us like an hour break. So the first thirty days, another reason why it was really bad is because out of the twenty four hours, you're only out of your cell one hour to so go shower. They have a little, little TV area, but after that one hour, get back in your cell. Did you have books? No, so no books, no writing What material. are you doing for 23 hours? Working out. So th- what I ended up doing is I did a routine that I did the same three things or same things three times a day. And the reason I did that was because we got three meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner. You don't know the time. You don't know what day it is, right? There's no the, – the windows on the cell, they're painted over, so you don't know. Like You can kind of see when it's, when it's brighter yeah. because of the paint, but you don't know what time it is or anything. So you're just kind of taming things based off of the meals. What were the three things you did? So I would wash my, so we had two pairs of everything, two pairs of shirts, two pairs of pants, two pairs of socks, you know, and so um, I would wash clothes, I would wash blankets, wash towels during those three segments, I would work out. Put push ups, squats, body stuff. Yeah, so um, we had some like plastic bags with like we would put our clothes, fill those up with as much stuff as I can in there, use those as weights. Okay. Um, Push ups, dips on, you know, your cot. What was Um, the third, third thing you did? Uh, a lot of cleaning, so just like hygiene stuff, you know. So I wash my face, wash my body with a with a rag, uh, brush my teeth, um, you know, just just anything to stay busy. Clean the cell over and over, anything. you know, just like because your mind has got to be racing and just going nuts. I mean, you could you could really lose your mental 
capacity to to be a normal human i mean you could go insane yeah um, yeah real quick how was the food so the f- i mean it, it was uh nope definitely n- no protein in there you know that when that was like it's funny you know but what, what, that was, what was it tortillas um so and- so you got breakfast lunch and dinner right usually breakfast was some sort of uh it could be maybe like powdered eggs um with like a scoop of beans and then like a roll um or lunch and dinner was kind of the same thing too where the, it was some sort of like a like a soupy i don't know like brothy with like mixed vegetables like uh potato I, you don't really know what it is you know it's just kind of you just eat it obviously but um and then like a side of rice or lentils or beans um and then um tortillas there was a lot of tortillas so you're you, you're given three tortillas per per meal okay it's kind of so nice it to, fills you up a little yeah so what you end up doing is you save your tortillas you let them out, and they get nice and crispy. And so those are your chips or snacks. For okay, later. there you, you go. Know? So, um, and then sometimes if you're lucky, uh, sometimes uh, whoever's passing around food, if there's extra, they'll they'll give you more. And uh, you know, one of the other things I did to like stay busy is you volunteer a lot. So mm. everything in there is ran by the inmates, pretty much, right? So. Um, the meals are given out by the inmates. So what ends up happening is every time the meals come in, they bring them in a cart, the guards do, they leave the cart in there, and then everybody has to get um, in front of the gate. You dress up, like make sure everything, you're, everything's clean, you know, very military style. They come around, do roll call. And at this time, you know that once roll call is done, you're going to be eating, right? So once they do roll call and everything, everyone's checked in. The guard goes down there, and everyone from there starts raising their hand, like, let me out, let me out, let me out. Because then if you get picked, you get randomly picked. If you get picked, then you get to come out of yourself for the next few hours, more to, free time. Right. You get to clean the, the, the place, like, like mop and broom and everything, which is, like, amazing. At, you know, like you, yeah, at least you're sure, doing something. Sure. Um, and then you get access to extra food, too, because now if there's any leftovers— they're yours. So you're you're learning the inner workings, the politics yeah, within yeah, the yeah, prison. Yeah. You know what's amazing to me, um, and and I want to get a couple a couple last questions out before we let you go here today, Eddie. And thank you for coming in and sharing this story yeah, because yeah, I think it will will wake some people up and hopefully yeah. uh, scare some people straight so they don't get locked up abroad. Yeah. What's amazing to me is when you were driving over the border, if that light wasn't red and it was green, your whole life, the whole path of your life, would be different. Because you would have just gone there with your girlfriend, you would have made the sunset, you would have had cocktails, and you would have had a great little yeah. vacation like most of us do in Rocky Point. But that light went red, which meant random check. Yeah. And now you have this incredible story and this very horrific, difficult, traumatic time in your life. But I would imagine on some level, not that you're happy it happened to yourself, but on some level, it woke you up to what's important. Yeah, it, de- it definitely has made a huge impact of the person I am now and the way that I think. Um, one of you know some some of the reasons is just the I've never been to through something that tough, right? And so I really pushed my limits in so many different ways. Um, it brought out the just the gratitude on the smallest things, like feeling the sunlight, seeing the sun, seeing stars. Gratitude. Fresh air, you know, that yeah. you're once everything gets, you know, it was like a slap in the hand of like what could happen if you die or, or mm-hmm. everything is taken away from you. Like everything's gone. No, you know, so now, you know, coming out, you know, on my worst days or most stressful days or whatever can happen because, you know, things are always going to happen. Right. It's not that bad. You know, no, I'm not there. I'm not. First thing you did when you touched that, American so. soil. What's the first day? The first day back. What'd you do? Ate McDonald's. You ate McDonald's. Is yeah. that where you went? McDonald's. It McDonald's. was McDonald's. Okay, yeah. it was McDonald's. Yeah. Uh, and and <laughs> did you? Uh, I don't know if you're allowed to talk about this or not, so don't if you can't. But do you still have any type of legal issues uh, in Mexico? Yeah. So so can what, you talk about that? I don't want to get any. Yeah. Yeah. I can. I, it's yeah because it's everything is you know. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So pretty much what ended up happening the, the after everything. So I I'm in there for 74 days. Right. Finally get released. Uh, The reason I got released, right, was because um, with that type of process and everyone that goes through it, you have to plead guilty because at the end, you're guilty, right? Okay, there was a gun in there. It was within reach. Yeah, it was an accident, but it is what it is. Okay, so you plead guilty. Technically, since I'm a first time offender, then uh, they gave me the option for parole. So I took the deal, right, and I got sentenced for two years and four months. So 
for the next two years and four months, you know, since then, I'm almost done. I'll be done in early 2025. Um, I have to do a monthly report that I send into the Mexican government. Um, and then I have to go physically over there, check in, do uh, you know drug testing, and they go over my parole. You have to physically cross the border and get checked in for your parole. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't do that, you could be extradited back to Mexico? Technically, they could pursue that. Um, from what I've read and understood, I mean— the U.S. government won't really. So you're go still going after through. You. I, mean, I you're just still, wouldn't be able to go back to Mexico. You're still going through this. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's an unbelievable story. Yeah. Um, and, and what I like is that you've you've come out of it out, out of prison on the other side, and you have this this newfound love and respect, and kind of woke you up as to what's important, what matters. And yeah. there was that old what was that book? Don't sweat the small stuff. I read that book for the first time in there. So after I got placed into general population. I wasn't much of a reader until I came out. I love reading now. That was the book that somebody gave me, one of the other inmates, and that's, I just got the chills that you said that. That was, it, it, yeah, the best book I've ever read because it was the perfect timing for me to read it in there. And then coming out after, I was like, the part of like, okay, it's small things, you know? Like, yeah. it's not that bad. So well, we yeah. can say that. And we can say don't sweat the small stuff, but yeah. you've you've lived it. Yeah. And yeah. you have a way of knowing, like, look, these little things, your boss is upset with you, you're having a fight with your partner, you're having put everything in perspective because like you said, at the flash of the light, the blink of an eye, your whole life could be taken away. Yeah. And um, you had your freedoms, your liberties, uh, everything just snatched from you because of something you admitted uh, you did wrong, right? Yeah. You broke the law. Yeah. Uh, Eddie Ortega, give me the rundown real quick, 30 seconds. What are you doing now? I understand you're, you're a personal trainer. What do you got going on? Yeah, so um, I actually recently quit my corporate job um, in pursuit of my passions, which is, um, so I'm an, I mainly do online coaching, so I, I'm able to assist people all over the world with their fitness goals. And a big part of that was being in prison that I was telling you I was working out all day, right? People started asking me. I started bartering I didn't, I didn't even ask to barter, but in there you barter things, right? Things you make, people make things or whatnot, or services like haircuts and whatnot, which I got haircuts in there. I got faded up, so <laughs> they get razors. You know, I don't have to go into it, but, um, you know, you do things in there to, like, gain more, right? So my thing was I was training the, the inmates. So I was training the inmates in there, writing up meal programs, you know, and also workout programs with what we had to work with, right? And uh, I would get free stuff. But the most impacting thing was there was high suicide rates, um, the first week that I was there, two people took their lives. And so a lot of that has to do with the part that you're locked up in there, have nothing to do, your mind is running, you're not moving around, you're depressed, anxiety, right? And what helps with all that? Working out, right? So I started preaching that a lot. Hey, you know, people are watching me work out. I'm telling them the benefits of it. Hey, man, it, you know, it's keeping me like sane, like it's helping me out a lot. People started doing that, implementing it, and then people started telling me, man, Eddie, I feel so much better. I'm not thinking those negative thoughts anymore. You know, I was, like, being really depressed and, you know, having – and so from that, it was one of those things where, like, it really, like, Clicked. this is what I really want to do. Like, this this is, like, this stuff helps people and saves lives potentially, yeah. you know. Like, Good for you, man. Yeah, so Good that's – you know, so that's why – Where I can people find you? On Instagram if they want to get some – Yeah, uh, so my coaching. Instagram uh, Instagram handle, Eddie underscore Ortega30. Um, and then there's a link on, on my bio there. You can That's click great. it. We can set up a consultation. I'm so happy you're doing yeah, it, man. man. You're, you're living it. your one life. Uh, it's yeah. a beautiful thing. It's a crazy, crazy-ass yeah, yeah. story. Unbelievable. Speaking of one life, as a lot of you know out there, uh, I am launching a clothing line, and it's called One Life. We will be launching the new T-shirts very soon. You're going to see them on my Instagram, at Billy Harfosh. And I'm happy to announce today that we will be featured at a market. It's called Sunrise Market Indoor Summer Bash. It's July 6th and 7th. It's at the Renaissance Hotel in Glendale. You know the hotel right next to the Cardinal Stadium, right next to State Farm Stadium? We will be there July 6th and 7th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And uh, we're going to be having some fun out there. Shout out to Diamond Cube Promo in Scottsdale. My partners in crime, my co- sorry, not partners in crime, my partners that uh, collabed on the, these T-shirts. And we got some awesome stuff coming your way. It's called One Life Clothing Line. My name is Billy Harfosh, broadcasting from Dave Pratt's Star Worldwide Networks. What an amazing story today. Folks, do not get yourself locked up abroad. Bye now.